Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. It's me, John Park, and you have made it. We have arrived together right here, right now, in time for JP's product pick of the week. And I'm going to go ahead and reveal the big secret because I want you to head on over to this URL right now. Go there, point your camera thing at that, that QR code there, or head to this URL. It's uh, www.adafruit.com slash product slash 4570. And that is where you are going to see our product pick of the week this week. That's it right there. Head to that page. And the reason is, I'm going to I'm gonna update this right now, refresh. This is half off, 50% off right now during this show. And you can watch the show from inside of here. So do that. Why don't you? And now that I've gone and spoiled it and told you exactly what it is, let's jump back in time and ask Lady Ada to give us a little heads up about this cool new product. Next up, uh, this is uh, a Brian special, um, following up on the success of the DS3502 I squared C digital potentiometer. We have an I squared C log potentiometer. So this is a logarithmic potentiometer, which is useful um, in some cases where you know you need to bias or have a feedback resistor in a loop, or for audio uh, applications where you need a logarithmic response curve. Um, so uh, it's I think a, like a 20k resistor or so. You can connect over I squared C. We have a library. There's a couple address pins, um, and you can set the wiper uh, to you know ground or. VCC and you get uh, connections for the high, um, it's actually, I, I think it can only be used as a low side, unless you have the wiper and the um, high side um, as a rheostat. Um, but, you know, it works great and uh, it's one of the few logarithmic I squared C potentiometers we found, so we made it into a STEM QT board for easy uh-huh. use. All right, that's right. That is the product. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run over to my cabinet and pick one up myself right now, and then we'll take a look at it and do some demos. So that is it. That's our product pick of the week. And it is a digital potentiometer that is logarithmic in response. It's the DS1841 log digipot. And what I want to do now is show you a little bit about it, show you a little bit of a demo. So first of all, if we head over to uh, the web page here again, and let's, let's take a look at this, uh, you'll see, first of all, it's half off. So for $2.98, you can pick up one uh, or 10 today. So go and go and get some if you have a use for these. Um, in the product page, you'll see if you scroll down a little bit, we have some info about it as well as a link to the learn guide. So if you head to this learn guide, you can learn how to use this. So first of all, this is in Stemma QT format. So you can just plug in some nice little quick cables, those little SparkFun quick cables, and connect it up to your microcontroller. Uh, and this is available for both Arduino and CircuitPython, as well as Python in, in Blinka on a Raspberry Pi or other Linux computer. And uh, this has, if you head to the downloads page in the guide, you can take a look at the data sheet there. And this will tell you about some use cases. So it mentions optical transceivers, linear and nonlinear compensation, instrumentation and industrial controls. And I don't know when I would ever do those things, but I do know when I would use this last one, which is the mechanical potentiometer replacement. So if you take a look at that right there, that's your typical potentiometer. This one might be a linear one, but if you're doing audio applications, particularly volume, you need a logarithmic response curve so that as you turn the volume up and down, it feels like it's a constant change. But our ears don't hear things linearly. They hear things in a logarithmic uh, fashion. So we need a logarithmic potentiometer if we want what seems like a smooth uh, control, perceptually smooth control. And that's what I think this is great for. So this is fantastic for any time 
you have some kind of a project, could be a radio, ham radio, other communications device, audio radio, where you want to be able to change the volume using either software controls or some other non-mechanical, let's say you want to use a magnetic sensor or a distance sensor to adjust volumes, then you want to introduce this into the mix, a digital potentiometer. In fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head to my down shooter here. And what you'll see is I've got a little clock radio. And I got this at the uh, thrift store a couple years ago, in fact. And I, I opened it up and I ran some wires to the internal volume potentiometer. So this just had a, a, a potentiometer for adjusting the volume. And I have grafted the DS1841 into there. And then you can see it's running over a Stemma QT cable to this Metro ESP32 Express, which has CircuitPython running on it. We'll take a look at that code in a minute. And it has the Stemma QT connector, quick connector, which makes it easy to hook up. And then I'm just running uh, power and, and data right now over USB-C cable there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this radio. I'm actually going to take my mic and point it at this. So let me take this off of my collar for a second. And I'm going to point this at the radio so you'll hear it. And what it's going to do is uh, the digital potentiometer is going to be increasing and decreasing the volume. And uh, it's going to sound like a nice smooth volume control going quieter and louder. So let's, let's check this out. Let me uh, go ahead and hit power. So there you can see it went through one little cycle of getting louder and getting quieter. I'll go ahead and uh, turn this off again for a moment. And then let's take a look at both the code as well as the serial output that's running on the Metro. So if we take a look here, and I'll keep the party going with our, uh, we can see this, it's nice to see it down there. So this is the code I'm running on here. And this is based on some example code that we have, which I just adjusted a little bit. So you'll see we're importing in some libraries, CircuitPython libraries for board, time, bus I.O., analog in. Actually, I don't use this in this, in this case. And then the most important one here, the Adafruit DS1841 library that lets us control this digital potentiometer. Uh, if you look here, you'll see that I've got the power, ground, and wiper of the potentiometer line connected up to those uh, equivalent pins on the digital potentiometer. And then I go ahead and set up the I2C bus. I set up the peripheral here, the DS1841. And then I set the, the wiper to zero initially, and that's actually full volume. So that's like uh, turning it to zero resistance. So that's gonna be the loudest. Then I just have a couple of simple loops here. It's very, very straightforward. I go and I print some output for myself. So if we take a look here, you'll see it says it's holding. Then it's lowering, uh, actually raising the volume, uh, and then it's going to hold for a couple seconds, then it's going to repeat that loop. So that's what uh, is happening on the potentiometer itself. And the way I'm doing that is just simply a couple loops where I iterate through a range from 0 to 127, and then 127 back down to 0. Actually, that's the one that happens first. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll turn this back on, and you can see... So there it gets real quiet when it hits the 127. And then it gets loud again. Hopefully you can hear that with my uh, lavalier mic on there. Hold that out just a second for a little demo. And one thing I think you'll notice there is that it's a very nice smooth transition and I didn't have to do any weird logarithmic math or code inside of CircuitPython. I have it going at these 128 taps or steps of the potentiometer. Essentially, linearly in my code, it takes care of on its own that graph being a logarithmic curve so that it sounds linear to our ears. Um, so... Uh, that, if you're, if you're curious about it, look up the way hearing works and why we use logarithmic instead of linear potentiometers. But if you use true linear, it would not sound right. I think you would get too, too loud too quickly uh, and then just hang out at what sounds like a loud volume. So 
there's a whole uh, sort of lookup table going on inside of the device, I believe, that handles that logarithmic uh, response. Also, something you'll see in the data sheet they mention is this uh, chip has a very good temperature control, has a couple of ways to deal with temperature control so that if the uh, device is getting hot, it still has the same response. So it can essentially compensate for its own internal temperature changing. And there's a couple of ways that it can do that. And you can look at the data sheet to learn more about that. Um, so yeah, I, I, let me know if there's any questions in the chat. Um, someone mentioned, Todd said, yeah, this is, this is a, a great demo for this kind of weird part. Now we can computer control all the random thrift store radios. Any, yeah, any, any kind of audio device that has a, a for real mechanical potentiometer, uh, which requires you to go up and grab it and turn it. Well, if you wanted to deal with that through software, you probably don't want to graft a motor onto there and deal with all that hassle. Instead, you can use this one, this little digital uh, logarithmic potentiometer. And as Lady Ada mentioned, we also do have a, um, let me get that out of the way there. There we go. We also do have a linear potentiometer, very similar part uh, that, that does uh, similar stuff for different applications where you don't need that logarithmic response curve. Um, so that is the uh, page right there. Head on over there. It's the product number 4570. During this show, you can get the 50% off on this. If you, have, if you have some cool uses for this, I'd love to hear it. I know we have a lot of people who deal with audio. This could potentially be useful for some type of audio mixing. Let's say you have a uh, mixing board and you want to try to retrofit it with some sort of new types of controls instead of the faders that are in there. No, this might work for you. Uh, so that is my product pick of the week. It is a logarithmic digital potentiometer. It is the DS1841 and it is a great digital substitute for a mechanical potentiometer for audio applications. That's my product pick of the week. I'm going to set that on my board of STEM QT goodness there. And that's going to do it for today. So thank you so much for stopping by to JP's product pick of the week. Remember, right now during the show, you can go and get these for 50% off. So throw a few in your cart and uh, we'll keep the lights on here at Adafruit a little while longer. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.